Bad habits will literally ruin your life. And when you have bad habits in your relationship with God, it can sometimes prevent you from growing closer with him. So today I'm gonna give you five habits that you need to stop in order to grow in your relationship with God and ultimately grow closer with him. What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Julia Peterson. I'm so happy to have you here today. I have been getting so many questions on the daily, like how do I grow closer to God? And I just made a video about that, steps to take in order to grow closer to God. But something I thought that I should share as well are things to stop. You know, there's things that you should be doing, but there's also things that you shouldn't be doing. And I think sometimes we forget about these habits that we can form just because humans are creatures of habit that we need to take out of our day-to-day -day life in order to grow closer to God. Same as anything, you know, you wanna become in good shape physically. Going to the gym will help. You need to go to the gym. You need to eat healthy foods. But if you don't stop eating foods that are bad for you, you're gonna have this awkward disconnect where one thing is benefiting you and one thing is hurting you. Same in your walk with God. If you're reading your Bible every day, trying to grow closer to him, but you're still going back to that same sin that God already saved you from, it's like a tug of war of who will win, your flesh or your spirit, you know? And there is a constant war for your soul. So today I just wanna help you guys as to how to get rid of these habits in your life that can be hurting you and that might be keeping you from growing in your walk with God. So the first habit that you need to stop in order to grow closer to God is to stop going back to the sins that God has already saved you from. I think it can be so easy to say, oh, this is the last time. Oh, this is the last time I'm gonna do it. God, I'm sorry, you've saved me, but this sin just feels so good. And until you let go, of the sin in your life and you realize the freedom you have in Jesus is better than the bondage you have in sin, you will not be able to escape the grip. And there's a verse that I wanna share with you from Romans 8 verse 12, it says, therefore dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live for all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. You guys, when you are not in a relationship with God, you are a slave to sin. The world is obligated to its sin because they have not become children of God. But because Jesus paid the price for our lives, when you accept Jesus and you have the gift of salvation placed on you, you are no longer under the obligation to sin. Meaning you have the option not to sin. Before Jesus, you didn't have that option, but now you have that option because you're given freedom in Jesus Christ. So when you have a relationship with Jesus, you need to remember the freedom that you have. The devil has no authority over you. There's a verse that says, no temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. And in the temptation, God will provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Temptations will come. You will be tempted because the devil is on the prowl for your soul. He wants you to fail. He wants you to die. But God will give you a way of escape of that temptation and that is the word of God and that is your relationship with him. So know that that sin that you seem to not be able to get free from, remember you are not in obligation to it anymore. God has already overcome it. God has already paid for that sin. So you need to repent and get away from that. And so practically, what is causing you to sin? If there is something in place in your life that is causing you to sin, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a friendship, maybe it's a web browser, all of these different things, put things in place to get away from it. Because again, you are the one who is able to say, no, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna resist temptation. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. Why? Because he has to flee. Because there is power in the name of Jesus and the devil has no authority over you anymore. Sin has no authority over you anymore because you are free in Christ. And I want you to get that so clearly in your head because once you understand that and you know the freedom that you have in Jesus, it is so important. So take this verse, Romans, 8, Romans 8, 12 through 14, because this is such a powerful tool to use. And you can know that no longer are you under obligation to sin. And if you continue living under your sin, you will die because you will be separated from Jesus because 
through having a relationship with Jesus, you are free from your sin. So I cannot stress that enough, you guys. Practically remove those things that are causing you to sin, but understand that you are a child of God. You are no longer a child of sin and you are no longer obligated to your sin. So remember that. Habit number two that you need to stop in order to be closer to God is laziness. Stop being lazy. And I'm not saying in the sense of like, oh, you just never get out of bed. And that is also a sin. Like read the book of Proverbs, you'll learn all about laziness. But I mean this in, this in the sense of complacency. Laziness in the way of thinking, oh, well, just this prayer or reading my Bible today, I don't really feel like that. You know, it's not really gonna do me any good anyway, so I'm not gonna do it. In order to grow closer to God, you must stay consistent in your relationship with him because just like working out at a gym, if you wanna see results from working out, you have to be consistent. You have to go. You have to put in the work. In your relationship with God, Imagine your faith as a muscle and in order to get stronger, you need to read your word, you need to pray, you need to go to church, you need to be in community, all of those things. So stop being complacent, understand that the choices that you make are important. Those 15 minutes that you choose to spend on YouTube rather than reading your Bible do matter. The time that you spend on the phone with your friend rather than praying with God do matter. You can still do those things, but it is important to discipline yourself to stop being lazy and complacent and say, okay, God, I want to grow closer with you. So I'm going to lay down my agenda and I am going to do the things that I know will benefit my soul. These are things that we just do for God because he wants them to. Reading the Bible is for us because we need it. We need to hear God's words. We need to understand the message that he has for us. So remember that, get into the word, stop being lazy, stop being complacent. If that's getting an accountability partner to be like, hey, you know what? I'm feeling kind of lazy in my walk with God. I'm just not really feeling motivated. Get motivated, stop allowing your flesh to tell you what it needs and understand that your soul and your body and your life needs the word of God because it is literally a fuel for your soul. Habit number three that you need to stop in order to grow your relationship with God is having the fear of man control your life. There's a verse in Proverbs 29, 25, and it says, fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. A snare is like a trap, right? So if you are fearing man, you are literally trapped. You are trapped in this environment of negativity and control and fear rather than caring more about what God thinks. Because it says whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So rather than fearing man, trust in God. If you're worried about what your friends are gonna think because you are trying to grow in your walk with God, get new friends, get better friends, or do it anyway, and maybe you will inspire your friends to also grow closer to God. It is not worth it. Your comfortability in your friend group, your comfortability in your life is not worth forsaking your relationship with God. If you say, well, what are my friends gonna think? Who cares? What is God gonna think if you are deciding not to spend time with him because you're worried about what your friends are gonna say? And I know it's so hard to do, it's so much easier said than done, but it is so important to lay down your agenda, to let go of the fear of man and say, okay, God, I'm all in. I don't care what these people have to say because it doesn't matter. In the grand scheme of eternity, you can't take anything in this life with you and your relationship with God is what matters. And you never know, you guys, you might start to be a light to your friend group. Your friend group might start following the Lord do not allow the fear of man to hold you back from following God because it will be the biggest mistake that you ever, ever make. So let go of the fear of man and start looking to the Lord. Habit number four that you need to let go of in order to grow closer to God is that you need to let go of control. This goes back a little bit to what I was just talking about, but if you're so worried about your plans, your future, your appearance, your trying to hold on to it and grasp it as tight as you can and you're not allowing God to take it and do whatever he wants to, God's a gentleman. He isn't just gonna come in, you're not a robot that he's gonna program in order for you to do all of these different things that you need to do in your life. No, God wants you to surrender those things to him, those relationships, those friendships, the plans that you have for your future. God is in control as long as you allow him to be in control. You can make your own decisions. You can veer off the path that God has for you, but that's not what I desire for you. That's not what God desires for you. He wants you to let go of control and say, okay, God, I'm all in in my walk with you. Because when you are trying to drive the boat of your life, you are not giving God full control and it's keeping a distance between you. It's not allowing you to get close with God because in order to hear his directions, in order to hear his words, you gotta get close to him. And if you're still trying to do this on your own over here and just control your life, but still have a relationship with God on the side, there will be that disconnect and that separation that you're feeling from God because you're watching this video. I know you wanna know how to get closer to God. 
that is there because you are still trying to stay in control of your life and we are called to give up our life. In Proverbs 3, five through seven, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight in all your ways. Submit to God, give him control, and he will direct your paths. He will show you where to go. He won't leave you high and dry. He won't leave you in the dark. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. Give God control and your life will begin to look like something you've never expected it to look for, look like before because you have his ultimate peace in your life. You have his guidance. You have his wisdom. You have his word. You have the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. And that is unlike anything that the world can give, but you can't get that unless you give God control. And God will not fully be in control of your life until you let go and surrender it to him. So surrender your life to Christ today. There's a verse that says, for whoever desires to keep his life will lose it. But who Whoever loses his life for God's sake will find it. And that is such a true thing. Don't desire to keep your life so tightly that you miss out on the life that God has for you. Surrender it to him and follow Jesus. And finally, habit number five that is keeping you away from growing your relationship with God is that you're isolating yourself. You must stop isolating yourself if you wanna grow closer to God. Iron sharpens iron. We are not called to do this life alone. And if you're worried about going to church, you're worried about having different friends and the ones that you've always known or being in community, that's a lie from the enemy. Like you need to be around community. You need to be around people that will uplift you, help you grow in your faith. Because the reality of it is we all will become weak at one point. But when you have other brothers and sisters in Christ to come alongside you and to build you up, to edify you in the word of God, your walk with the Lord will become so much stronger because you are able Able to walk alongside people who care about you, who love you, who love the Lord, who are listening to the Lord and can spur you on towards good things and not drag you back into the lifestyle that God has already saved you from. So don't isolate yourself. Get out there, make Christian friends. If that's a hard thing for you, go to church. Get involved in a life group. I feel like there hasn't been a church I've gone to that doesn't have some sort of thing that you can get involved in to meet people and because the church values community. And so find a church in your area, pray and ask God to put people in your life because prayer is powerful. Don't think that it's not. And God cares about your friendships. God cares about the circle of people you have in your life. So pray and ask him to bring those people to you because you will begin to see a radical transformation in your relationship and closeness to God, when you see more believers and more people spurring you on towards a closer relationship with him. And so guys, I hope that these five tips were helpful to you. If you guys want a part two or you guys have other video ideas, leave them in the comment section down below. I just love y'all so much. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. I'm so thankful for all of you guys and I'm praying for all of you guys always. Pray that you are able to let go of these habits and grow closer to God. I love you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye.